We are a listed company, so I have my obligatory <laughs> disclaimer. Uh, essentially, nothing I say here can be used against me. Uh, Avita Medical is a listed company. We're in the regenerative space. Our lead product is Resell Spray on Skin. It is a point of care stem cell treatment for a wide range of dermal defects, which include acute and chronic wounds, scars, and a whole slew of other uh, dispigmentation issues and other defects. As I mentioned, we are listed. We're on the Australian Exchange as well as on the U.S. OTCQX. We have a market cap of about $42 million, which I think is, of course, quite too low. A cash on hand, about $9 million. We have early stage revenues. Uh, I consider these really as uh, validative revenues, but this year through June 30th, our fiscal year, we have about 4.2 million in revenues. The, we are on market, and uh, as I mentioned, we are selling in Europe as well as Australia and recently in China. In the U.S., we are undergoing FDA trials. We're in a phase three trial funded by the U.S. Department of Defense. My 30-second elevator pitch, I describe our technology as really harnessing the body's ability to heal itself and packaging it into a small, low-cost, easy-to-use bedside kit that addresses the needs of the major stakeholders. And this includes, of course, the, the patients with improved outcomes and improved quality of life, the surgeons and clinicians with a very fast, easy, effective mechanism to treat these uh, conditions, as well as, in many cases, a real revenue generator, and most importantly, perhaps, for the healthcare system, uh, heavily burdened, as we've heard earlier, uh, reduced patient care costs. The markets that we're addressing are, are quite large. Uh, there are quite a few markets also, which in, in some ways is a real advantage in that these can be parsed out and gives us excellent opportunities for partnering and distribution. The large markets for the chronic wounds we're all familiar with. Aesthetics and plastics are Again, massive markets, how long is a piece of string? Uh, as we move down to some special cases of the vitiligo, dispigmentation, and burns, burns being the smallest of our markets, but where we started. We can see uh, or estimate on the order of 10 to 15 million procedures annually. Our current sale price right now in Europe is about uh, 1,100 euro, so these are quite substantial markets. I think the, the best way to describe how we use Resell and the preparation of this cell suspension is to compare it with the current standard of care, for instance, for burns. If one had a burn on the chest, then the standard would be to take a large piece of skin from the thigh or the back and essentially glue and staple it in place. The patient lives. However, there's large secondary mob morbidity associated with that wound that's been created with the graft, disfiguring. Uh, the aesthetics are terrible, of course, and in many cases, this new graft has to be specially treated, multiple uh, resurgeries as well as oftentimes uh, physical therapies. So in contrast to the uh, split thickness meshed graft is often used, what we do is take a very small piece of skin. The skin is disaggregated in its proprietary process. The cells have been positively stressed. All the cells in your skin are then combined into a uh, cell suspension, which is sprayed onto the wound. A dressing is applied and left in place for five to seven days, during which time re-epithelialization occurs and the skin, the, the dressing lifts off. This entire process takes about 15, 20 minutes. It's done completely at bedside, is non-cultured, does not require a special laboratory or special training. So it really has many advantages over uh, other options. So just to quickly see uh, how this would work, unfortunately, this is a non-untypical case. Uh, this is a, a child with a severe scald to the chest. This child would have been grafted. Instead, we take a small piece of skin, create this cell suspension, which is sprayed over the wound. These actively processed and stressed cells, they migrate, proliferate, and differentiate. Uh, these are essentially leaking bags of of proteins, I like to call them. And so there's tremendous signaling going on. These cells then combine, regrow, and you have healthy, normal skin. We have a number of studies that are underway. As I mentioned, we are cleared in Europe, China, and Australia. So we have a number of post-marketing studies that are underway at this point. In the US, we have two trials underway, an FDA for a level three 
and then a, a, a level two, which is also uh, on way. We have a number of uh, pipeline applications, but right now we are focusing on the dermal applications. I don't have time to go into the, the real mechanism of actions, but uh, this whole approach using the, the sprayed skin really is a very different than the normal healing by what we call secondary intention. In, in normal healing, of course, to a, an acute wound, the cells break off on the periphery and heal going inward, so we close from the outside in. In contrast with a recell, we spray these cells over the surface of the wound, and so it is within the wound that we have these islets of regeneration, so we heal from within the wound. Again, just to, as a quick contrast with what we call normal physiological healing, I'm sure most of you are familiar with this, in the instance of an acute wound, the body's first response is to try and shut down, close things off, stop the blood supply, stop the innervation, and uh, TGF-beta is uh, hot, raised up in concentration, which actually shuts down the other systems and other growth factors. Uh, after a period of days to weeks, this these cells start to build up within the wound and release uh, several proteins. Amongst them is the HSP90 or heat shock protein 90, which acts to block the activity of TGF beta and disinhibits the activity of many of these cells and therefore allows the, the healing. With Recell, what we do is uh, turn this on to a really from a stop to grow. And so when these cells are taken from your skin, it's disaggregated, the cell suspension is created, sprayed onto the wound. These cells are in a high proliferative state. They're releasing the HSP90, blocking the TGF beta, and therefore allowing the activation of several of these other growth factors, uh, which then allow the formation of this extracellular membrane. And additionally, we have good evidence that there is strong recruitment of mesenchymal stem cells into the wound. This clicker is not quite working as fast as I'd like it to be. So, uh, in summary from the physiological side, what we do is we take autologous cells, they are positively stressed, they're in the right state, they're at the right time, they're applying to the right place. It is the full complement of cells, so your stem cells, keratinocytes, uh, fibroblasts, melanocytes. These cells do engraft, and so they can be traced for several weeks. Uh, these cells are emitting a number of uh, growth factors and proteins which inactivate and turn the wound on its head, and then the bone marrow recruitment. So what I'd like to do now is just quickly go through and uh, really do a, a quick overview of some of the various indications. Um, some of these pictures are not so pleasant. I've kept most of the bad ones out, but these are oftentimes acute and chronic wounds. This is a, a soldier who was badly burned to the face. He would have been grafted. I think we've all seen people with this major disfigurement. Instead, sprayed with recell, and as you can see, three weeks later, good healing, and uh, 10 months later, essentially uh, unscarred. It's not perfect. You can still see some areas, but he's able to grow a beard. Uh, is completely normal. We've done a series of some 25 pediatric scalds, which is un unfortunately very common. The, a child pours a bucket of water or steaming onto themselves. And again, with children in particular, grafts to the chest and area are, are just uh, devastating, both from the aesthetic side, but moreover, uh, tissue from different areas of the body grows at different rates. Therefore, if you take tissue from the thigh or the back onto the face or onto the chest, they are likely to have multiple surgeries throughout their lifetime, as well as significant aesthetic problems. So here you can see a series of examples. This child would have been grafted. Instead, very nice outcomes. No scarring, nicely matched. Again, here's just a, I'll go through a quick series. So these are all very deep partial thickness burns that would have been treated with graft, and instead, using Recell, we're able to avoid the graft and have excellent aesthetic and functional outcomes. This is an interesting uh, image. Uh, on the left forearm, the person was uh, burned. As you can see, I guess the pointed, does this work? Uh, in the front of the forearm, you, it was grafted. Oh, oh. <laughs> OK, 
Can I go backwards? Here we go. Oh, sorry, I'm out of control with this, huh? Um, on the forearm, you can see that up, up closer to the wrist, there was a standard graft. In the middle portion of the forearm, it was grafted with recell. Uh, down in that four-week on the lower, your lower left, uh, you can see the, this marking on the forearm. At 24-week, you can see that there is still evidence of the graft and where it was treated with recell in that middle section. Uh, essentially a, a perfect match. You also see the uh, tattoo removal, which is again to be a very big business. Uh, uh, we, we have several clinics uh, in Scotland that are specializing in tat removal, and it's, it's, it's kind of interesting. This is another example. Uh, this is a woman age 23. When she was 12 years old, she had a bad fondue accident. As you can see, this hypertrophic so it's raised up, restricted movement, hyper and hypopigmentation, treated with recell, a single treatment, and you can see very nice outcome. Uh, surgical scars, uh, a large business. This happens to be a thyroidectomy. This woman would not wear uh, open collared shirts, and now you can see very nice outcomes. Acne scarring, uh, tremendous business. In the U.S. alone, there's some 600,000 surgical procedures to treat acne scarring. With Recell, we can see that this treats not only the three-dimensional structure, so we give a smooth skin, but additionally the, the repigmentation. Because the tissue, that's, or the, the cells that are being applied are appropriate for that region, it has a, both a three-dimensional memory as well as the proper coloration and pigmentation. We have a study that's gone on. We've just completed the first stage in the Netherlands on the uh, repigmentation with vitiligo. Similarly, we have a, a study that's gone on in the U.S. of phase two and in Germany. We'll be combining these. Uh oh, I again jumped forward for the uh, repigmentation. Vitiligo is a, quite a serious condition. It affects about one to one and a half percent of the world's population. With dark skinned people, this is particularly important. And, of course, uh, all the way up to the purely aesthetic facial rejuvenation procedures. We have a study going on in Germany right now where 25 patients are being treated with Resell for the wrinkle revision. Moving into uh, some of the chronic wounds. Again, uh, sorry, not such pleasant pictures, but uh, we can see chronic wounds obviously are a major burden to the healthcare system. They're highly common. About 1.5% of the general population with the aged above 70 years old, it's about 3 plus percent. This is hugely costly for the healthcare system, and obviously the quality of life for the patient is, is tremendously degraded. Most of these ulcers that remain open for more than three months will take another three to six months to heal. And in fact, if we look at the overall treatment of ulcers, only about 50% will heal within four months. So here with Resell, a single treatment, and you can see within four weeks this wound has healed up. Uh, again, uh, a very serious ulcer. This person, this ulcer has been uh, open for over two years. The person was unable to walk, treated with recell. Within a few weeks, all pain was gone. The person was able to be up, moving around. Dressings changes were down to once every week as opposed to a daily, and within five months, complete closure. We have a number of studies that now are going on. We have a large multi-center study going on in, in Europe. We'll be looking at 85 patients. This is a, a first part of this study, and what we can see is that about 70% of these ulcers closed up within 60 days. The average ulcer duration was about 18 months. The average size was close to 100 square centimeters, so these are sizable recalcitrant ulcers. Similarly, with the uh, DFU, we have very good results, and, and we'll be compiling those data shortly. Going to the healthcare system, of course, uh, the, the burden and how do, we, how do we decrease costs with the treatment of burns. We have uh, put together a nice model. This is based on data collected in the UK and Birmingham. Uh, what we look at is the total body surface area. So a large burn is more expensive to treat than a, a small burn. When you use a treatment with the standard of care, as you can see, that red line from a small, a few percent body surface area all the way up to a large 20 percent. These become very expensive on the order of 50,000 pounds to treat. With resale, we can reduce these expenses by 20 to 40 percent. 
So we offer a wide range of solutions to a number of different indications, and we have the opportunity to save significant money to the healthcare system. And uh, that do I have? Uh, we we are global, as I mentioned. We're in uh, in Europe selling. We have a direct sales force. We have a joint venture in Italy and uh, distributors in Turkey, China, and down in. Uh, Australia. In the U.S., we're going through our pivotal studies for burns and a phase two study we've just completed for dispigmented wounds. So that finishes it for me. Thank you.